Hello everybody, <clears throat> welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I watched this one yesterday. Um, I was going to do my review and I tried to report crime again and got threatened to get swatted so I couldn't do the review yesterday. But picking it back up today, so a little delay from when I watch it to when I'm reviewing it. But now that has been, I've been swatted four or five times for trying to literally just try to report crime that is not an exaggeration, I'm not leaving anything out. And I got friend yesterday and they never showed up, so. It is absolutely illegal to try to report crime in the United States. It is abs Law enforcement is literally completely compromised by ineptitude, incompetence, and patheticness, and flat out crime. But I gotta keep trying to move on with my life, gotta keep putting stuff out there, gotta keep trying to move forward, even though there's truly no way to move forward, and all I need is one financial opportunity one time. So if you're new to my channel, I do a lot of movie reviews. Um, I'm still trying to upload at least once or twice a week on my off days from work. Again, I've lost a lot of property because of ongoing criminal activity, and so I'd love to be more hands-on with my creative content, but I'm still not allowed to get paid or have a time frame to manage the money that I do have, so the output is dwindling down pretty substantially. But you know how we do it on these ones. I will give you my overall impressions and grade after reading the overview as provided by Google. Um, if you have not seen the movie, you would like to based or not based on my recommendation. You're going to want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. We're discussing the plot synopsis and any character development and any similar movies or major themes. So, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas was released in 2008. It is rated PG-13. It is a war-slash-thriller movie and has a runtime for an hour and 34 minutes. You can currently watch it for free on YouTube. That's what I did. It says, During World War II, eight-year-old Bruno, played by Asa Butterfield, and his family leave Berlin to take up residence near their concentration camp where his father, David Thewlis, has just become commandant. Unhappy and lonely, he wanders out behind his house one day and finds Shmuel, played by Jack Scanlon, a Jewish boy of his age. Through a barbed wire fence of the camp separates them. Though the barbed wire fence of the camp separates them, the boys begin a forbidden friendship, oblivious to the real nature of their surroundings. 65% liked it on Rotten Tomatoes, 7.7 .7 out of 10 on IMBD, directed by Mark Kerman, did 44.1 million at the box office. So what did I think? Um, I thought the runtime was good. I thought the tone of just the the characterizations and the musical score, the background music was gave it a pretty a solid, solemn tone. Um, I thought again the runtime was solid. I thought the the content matter again dealing with anti-Semitism in World War II. Um, so again, always having a historical background is always in intriguing and interesting to me. Always boost up the grade a little bit. So I thought, I thought it was a good exposition of just, you know, a family dynamic of the mother and the, she's not, she's with, she's with, it's from the perspective of, of a Nazi family. So the mother's not super into the Nazi thing, the father is into the Nazi thing, the children are just learning what's going on. And so I thought it was a good exposition of just youth, childhood, um, and historical elements of, you know, race, hatred, and extermination. So overall I thought it was entertaining and good, solid run time, I'm going to give it a B plus. Definitely recommend it if you've not seen it. I thought it was a good little flick. So if you've not seen it, I would like to. Now we're going to break down um, scene by scene as best as I can remember. So the movie opens up. They're living in Berlin. I did think it was kind of strange. I think most of them have an English accent in here. So I don't know why, why, why not have a German accent or just no accent at all. But for whatever reason, they kind of have English accents. Um, but Bruno is the eight-year-old child. Elsa is the mom. Who That actress, I think I recognized her. I think she's the mom in Bates Motel, which is another show I kind of watch kind of like, but didn't really uh, have it reviewed, and only saw like the first couple seasons, just kind of stopped watching it. But that is the mom, the dad is Ralph, and he is the commandant, and they have a, he had, Bruno has an older sister who's probably like 12, and he's eight, and her name is Gretel. And so they're starting off in Berlin, they're having this big party, and they're learning that they're going to be relocating, they're gonna be moving, um, and that's what the party is for. So they have this big party, and then they move, um, they say where, but I don't know where in Germany, but they move and it borders, like the overview said, a concentration camp. And so Bruno, when he first gets there, you know, they're setting up stuff and he meets um, Pavel, who's this older gentleman, who was an enslaved Jew, and he has um, these, these striped pajamas on and Bruno's inquiring to his mom, like, you know, why, why do these workers have pajamas on? And so, you know, Elsa kind of gets mad at um, Ralph for, you know, letting kind of the people that are enslaved in the house or around him. You know, the mom's kind of trying to shelter him a little bit. 
But regardless, he's now you know introduced to Pavel, who was a doctor when he before he was enslaved, and so. Um, you have another scene where Bruno wants to set up a tire swing to play in the backyard, and there's a lieutenant caught something. I, don't, I, I just can't. Constantine, I don't know the, the the character name gets cut off before I can see it. So, but he's like a younger colonel or lieutenant, I guess. But the um, but the dad, the dad is a, dad and mom are I don't know forty, and the lieutenant looks like you know mid twenties or something. But regardless, there's a scene where he treats Pavel like very much like a slave in front of Bruno. It makes uh, um, Pavel set up the tire swing for Bruno. And so Bruno, again, you know, the characterization seeing a young child who's just in their youth who don't really, doesn't really have any predispositions to hatred or anything, seeing discrimination, enslavement, and a bereavement of the human condition by Pavel. And so that happens. Um, and then Bruno's also wandering in the backyard, and that's when he meets Shmuel. Who is the boy his age, which is you know referenced in the title of the boy in the striped pajamas, and so he's in this concentration camp behind this um, um, electrified fence. Um, it, Bruno and Shmuel meet the first time, and they're just kind of you know little kids getting to know like well, you know, why does your name sound like that? Why does your name sound like that? And so you know still oblivious to what's going on in the real nature of the interaction, or why Shmuel is behind the cage, or in the concentration camp. And so Shmuel, Bruno gives him some food sometimes, he forgets some food, they go back and forth like three or four times just talking and getting to know each other. Um, Shmuel always gets called in, like there's like a bell or just someone ringing something where it's all, this, all the slaves have to go back into the barracks or into the concentration camps or whatever you want to call it. I forget what the actual term was. Um, but just the living quarters of all the slaves. And so they go back and forth a couple times. Shmuel one day loses his father, and he's like, you know, he went away. Um, there's another scene where um, uh, Elsa is getting out of the car, the mom, and she, you know, Lieutenant Cot, whatever his name is, the lieutenant, it's like, you know, they're, they're even worse when they're burning. And Elsa's, you know, the re as the view, you, you realize that Elsa didn't know they're actually just burning the Jews as well. And so that's a scene that really, you know, develops Elsa's character. Um, Bruno and Gretel have a teacher or a tutor. I think it's Tutor Lists. Uh, there was another character. I'm not going to tell which character is which, but whatever. The tutor in the movie. Um, and he starts to indoctrinate um, Bruno and Gretel into the Third Reich or to the, you know, Hail Hitler um, kind of uh, mentality. And so... Bruno doesn't really, you know, he takes it just as school in his characterization. He's just a kid that wants to go on adventures. Um, Gretel, who's again right around 12, um, she's more accepting of the ideology of the Third Reich of Hitler. And so she becomes more ingrained just kind of into the, into the mentality of all Jews must be eradicated. And so that kind of goes on there. It doesn't play a huge role, but it develops their characterizations a little bit. Um, but then another telling scene is kind of interesting. It really playing the family dynamic against the nationality and you know there's the the group mentality. We're doing something for the greater good. Um, they have a they have a dinner one night, um, and um, the grandfather of Bruno comes, but the grandmother doesn't. And it's like you know, originally it just says the grand the grandmother is sick and can't couldn't make it. And as the viewer, you don't know anything any better. But then as the dinner goes on, lieutenant, the lieutenant um, kind of like slips up or says that his father is, is, went away to Switzerland. Um, and he doesn't know why, but obviously defecting away from, to not serve Hitler. And so that's, I guess, a big no-no. And so Ralph, the boss of Lute the lieutenant, um, the commandant, is like, you know, you have to tell your superiors of, that your dad defected away from the group. And so lieutenant gets sent to the front lines and he's basically gone. But then also there's another comment from either Elsa or somebody else, and so kind of pointing out the hypocrisy where Ralph sends the lieutenant to the front lines to, you know, pretty much get killed, uh, or certainly to be in harm's way because he didn't report about his father. But at the same time, in the same, like, there's a comment, I forget exactly what she says, but there's a comment where you, you learn that the reason the grandmother didn't show up to the dinner is because she was the anti-Third Reich or anti-unfollowing Hitler. So it's kind of the hypocrisy of, Lieutenant, the lieutenant gets sent to the front lines to die because he didn't report his father, when at the same time the commandant doesn't have to report his mother, even though it's the same kind of thing, but just, you know, men serving in the army, certainly in World War II. And so I thought that was, that was a very interesting dynamic and well, well presented there. 
Um, but regardless, if that kind of happens, then you kind of get to the resolution or the end of the movie. Um, uh, Elsa wants to move away the kids because she realizes, again, that after the comment of the burning Jews, and she really wants them to be away from this environment, um, basically he's gonna, has Bruno saying, you know, they're going to move not back to Berlin, but somewhere away from a place that is directly next to a concentration camp. And so Bruno just kind of said, well, I guess there's another scene where Schmuel, um, he's an eight-year-old boy, they're having this big party, so Bruno runs into Schmuel in the house, and he's like, you know, what are you doing in the house? And Schmuel's like, you know, they need somebody with small fingers to, to polish the glassware. That's for this big party. And so Bruno is always giving uh, Schmuel food, and so he gives him some more food, and then either the tutor or... Uh, uh, the lieutenant or whoever, again, I'm missing up the scene order, but comes in and is like, you know, have you been stealing food? And Bruno's like, no, I've been giving it to him. And so the next time Bruno sees Schmuel, he's got a big black eye and big red eye, clearly from being beaten. But Schmuel just being you know, another eight-year-old child forgives him and is like, you know, we're still friends. And so the resolution to the movie is um, Bruno is going to be shipped away from the, this, the, the residence next to the concentration camp. His mom doesn't want him to see that stuff. And he just wants, and Schmuel loses his father, and they're both, Schmuel is obviously less oblivious, but Bruno and both of the, and Schmuel are both kind of oblivious to exactly what's going on, Bruno for certain. And so basically, before Bruno gets shipped off, he wants to sneak into the concentration camp to help Schmuel find his father, but his father's clearly been executed and burned. And so Schmuel sneaks out Bruno, um, some... A, a pair of pajamas, um, and he, Bruno brings a shovel and he digs under the electric fence and goes with Schmuel into the, um, into the center of the concentration camp. So at which point all of them, they all get rounded up and they all get told to strip naked and go into the, the gas chamber and say they're going to take a shower. And so at the same time, the mother and father realize that uh, Bruno is not just playing in the back on the tire swing. They see a sandwich he had, he had brought a, a Schmuel a big sub submarine sandwich and he had dropped it and so they're all, all frantically looking they find his clothes just outside the concentration camp so the commandant Ralph his father you know is like open the doors and trying to run through the thing and at the same time um, Bruno Schmuel and all the other uh, Jews in the camp get gassed to death and so that's kind of the resolution of the movie is the commandant's son sneaking into the concentration camp and getting gassed with the rest of them so right pretty much right after that again it's not a gory or gruesome scene it's rated PG-13 um, but right after that, the credits roll, and that's the resolution to the movie. So overall, again, I don't know if there's any historical accuracy to this actual family, but I thought, I thought it was a good, well-done commentary, just again about youth development versus ideology and nationalism, and especially some historical background. So overall, I give it a B plus, higher end of entertaining. Um, even though I haven't been doing many movie reviews, I still check YouTube and Tubi and the free ones. I um, don't have a streaming service currently. I could probably afford five, ten bucks on one of these. Now that I have my wonderful job, but um, again, I'll probably be trying to stick to at least two pieces of content um, a week on my off days, best I can do it. So I'd really love to focus on this stuff full time, and all I would need is some way to make three thousand dollars a month residual, and I've earned it. Again, I get interest payments of about fifteen hundred bucks, and so if I could just get another piece of fifteen hundred dollars, I could do this full time again. But it is what it is, and people cannot accept scientific proof, and they certainly will not enforce the law. So overall, I'll be putting out as much content as I can and, and just trying to live my life in a world with absolutely no morality, absolutely no decency. And the city again, watching a movie about being a slave, and it's like, I've literally been stripped of my rights. Like, I'm forced to work without a way out, and I, every time I try, I literally get swatted by police for literally doing nothing besides a war crime. Like, yesterday, I called the FBI building a couple times, and I'm literally like, hey, my name is Brad, here's my property that's being ruined, here's the, the law that's being infringed, can you guys do something? To which they literally just say, have a nice day in the most mocking, degrading tone and hang up. And if you call them back, they say that's threatening. It's like, I'm literally trying to report crime. That is your job, you take taxpayer dollars. And then they threaten, they're like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna send, without getting, I'll go over to my language thing, but then they're like, okay, we're gonna send a wellness checkout. Most degrading shit in the world. I am more mature than you, I am more developed than you, I'm giving you a direct legal and lawful order, you're obstructing justice, you're being insubordinate. And then I do nothing besides tell you that you guys are committing crimes with zero threatening thing, and this is just my normal speaking tone, and then you say you're gonna swat me, is it, is threat. Like I, I am being state sponsored tortured by the United States government, literally. And so to see these things and then it actually happens to you personally, it's disgusting. But there's nothing I can do about it. I'm completely done trying to contact law enforcement. Every single day you guys are committing crimes, felonies after felonies after felonies. 
but again, the law enforcement structure is completely compromised by corruption and, 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 and crime. And so there's nothing I can do to stop the biggest gang in the world. So I just try to live my life, and I have literally been tortured my entire life. Since I have been seven years old, I have had no conscious memory of ever breaking that cycle of existing, offending people for existing, people then getting, wanting, asking them to themselves, do I have any responsibility for this action? Them saying no, and then they exerting any punishment over me they can. Whether that's leaving a shitty co comment on my YouTube, or that's swatting me from police, or that's a any, sort of, any sort of authority they can s assert over me, and it's illegal. In doing so, they commit crimes, but they don't care because there's no enforcement. I am surrounded by people biologically older than me that are profoundly less mature, and they have authority over me because the social structures are broken. And there is nothing I can do about it. And it is every minute of every day, and again, reaching fundamental enlightenment, there's such a profound sense of peace to it. And so you've taken my peace of mind because you guys are criminals. And then I try to, it, the, anytime I try to break out of that cycle, I get called a threat, and all I do is report crime, literally. And then because people say that would never happen, and the collective insecurity of the group blames the victim before I get any chance to tell my story or, or, or again, just establish facts, I get blamed for it and I get called a threat. And it is disgusting. It has happened every two days, two weeks, and two months of my entire life. I need one person to do the right thing one time, and I never suffer again. And all I mean by that is some way to make some money. Some way to make some money. Because now even though that I'm working full time, it's like... I, I don't, I don't even mind working, but if I, I have to work full time to not have any extra income, and it's simply just to maintain, the, again, the $26,000 a year I live on. But if I can get it to like $40,000, which is hilarious for my skill sets, offering having a $40,000 job, people, most people wouldn't even like think about taking a job at that low. But it's again, if I have an extra $500 to $1,000 a month, I get to get, advertise my YouTube channel with YouTube advertising. I could just even put some, again, have some a creative budget to do more videos, again, like the cooking, or I might need a new tripod, or again, just the ingredients for food, where if you cook a meal that you haven't really prepared much before, you're going to have either a lot of leftovers or a lot of ingredients that you just kind of waste. I have no expenditure balance, no no budget to make any sort of creative output. So it's just, it's just, it's just so weird, because again, it, it truly would take one person one time, and my life would change forever and permanently. And then I could just do my uh, research content, which again, the people at the highest level asking me, why are you still trying to make money? Why don't you just focus on your videos? And then all of the people at the mid-level to lower levels literally just scapegoat the fuck out of me. And it's just like, I have never gone two days, two weeks, or two months without a profound sense of just this like ringing in my head of other people's insecurities because they have to blame me for their actions, and they can. And there was nothing I can do about it. So thank you for, again, just long-winded to say I'm going to put out as much content as I can. Um, and it's just realistic. I would say my life is ruined, but my life never began. Like, I have never gotten out of this abuse cycle. And I have no understanding of how it could ever stop. Because all of the people that could stop it immediately already know about it and won't. And all the people that either have no real influence or are just, you know, kind of NPCs or just not really influential in terms of law enforcement or academia or YouTube land or any of these other businesses that I apply to, they're just going to be like, what is this guy talking about? Fuck him. And it's just, it is so degrading for the service that I've provided to our species and to this planet. But you guys have no morals, you have no values, and you guys will never grow up. But if you made it to this far, thank you for watching another movie review, and I will see you on the next one.